this is Andy too. This little machine is a Singer Model 328K. I won it at an auction and I'm going to uh, wash it. I'm going to clean it up and uh, wash it. And this time I'm going to do something pretty different where in the past I've taken uh, you know a lot of a lot of parts off the machine and I've removed the motor and light and stuff and wash the machine in a shower or tub and uh, I'm, I all I did with this was take off all the covers to to expose everything inside I, I didn't take this off this is a dual cover the outsides metal has a couple of tiny little screws here that hold it to a plastic plate that has a couple of tiny screws in it holding it to the aluminum body but one of those screws that is very stripped out <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave that leave that there but uh, I've got all the covers and stuff that I took off here the hand wheel motor belt and uh, so forth and uh, what I've been doing with these lately is just filling a sink uh, or a dish a big bowl with just uh, uh, warm soapy dish water with just using a liquid uh, dish soap and letting them soak for a while and that's usually uh, enough to loosen any gunky stuff on the machines and smells and grit and uh, stuff like that and then I wipe them down with a brush rinse them and depending on the part I, I'll dry it with a hair dryer so I don't get any uh, flash rust and uh, then I've been doing as I said with the machine but um, this type of machine I've had trouble with in the past getting the motor out this is an internal SNK2 motor but there's got a there's a bracket and the wires are all spliced up and everything and it's kind of a tight fit and annoying to get out and back in. So I'm going to leave the motor in there and wash it in place. <laughs> what could go wrong with that, right? <laughs> so we're going to find out uh, later how how that goes. And uh, as f uh, for the other parts of the video. I'm going to just kind of show you a little clips of how I do it. I've got a lot of cleaning videos on my AndyTube channel and uh, I made a playlist of some of them and at the ending page, what they call the ending page of the video, I can put a link to that playlist. In the description below the video I'll put the uh, chemicals and stuff that I use. Uh, uh, my favorite is this Crud Cutter Original Cleaner and Degreaser, water-based, earth-friendly cleaner. And uh, I dilute that down to anywhere from 15% uh, or more solution with just tap water. And I'll speak to that solution as we go. And uh, I also have a mixture of that about 15 or 20 percent in a spray bottle. And uh, what, what I want to, uh, I'm going to start with what I call pick and brush. These machines that have a zigzag system, a can stack, camp stack, disc driver, or pattern selector with a worm gear, there's always gunky grease down here I want to get rid of. And this machine does have steel gears um, here and at the top of the vertical arm shaft that I want to get clean. So first I use uh, wooden or plastic sticks to scrape off as much as I can. Then I do a dry brush to brush off as much more residue as I can get and then I'll use uh, brushes with a solution of the crud cutter to get off even more. But I want to say it's been my experience that once you start using the cleaner 
you 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 don't want to stop <laughs> um, once the cleaner is on the machine it's been my practice to uh, you know pre-clean it here on the bench move it into the wash area and spray it with some more cleaner and brush it down or whatever and then uh, rinse it very well and then dry it right away uh, I, I use a mostly a leaf blower because of the volume of air and uh, I also plan to use a, a warmer or hot air and a, and a hair dryer to work on that motor area and then I bring it back to the bench and I oil it in every place that it says uh, in the manuals to oil and I do that so if there's any residual moisture in the bushings or any of these metal parts I don't want flash rust so uh, I think it's a good idea to have that set up your wash area have your cleaning supplies have your have your oil and grease any brushes that you want to use and just kind of make it a ongoing process set enough time aside so that once you start putting chemicals on the machine you just continue until the machine is dried and lubricated so speaking of that I'll put a link in the description below the video also of the Singer uh, support page where you can get a free copy uh, PDF download copy of the original um, instruction manual I'll put a link to a seller who sells uh, the service manual for this for a reasonable uh, price. And uh, you you may notice here that the tension is gone. Let let me find that real quick. I forgot to set that. Okay, up. sorry about that. Um, what I did was remove the whole tension unit, the whole tension assembly. And uh, the way you do that on this machine, uh, because of the vibrating bracket here, they didn't put the set screw that holds the tension stud. They didn't put it here on the side like a lot of machines. They actually put it on top of the stud. So I just turned the hand wheel to clear the take up lever and took a, a screwdriver and went straight down from the open top to that set screw and loosened it a couple of turns and, and pulled this out. Now before I did that I turned it all the way left to zero to open this up a little bit and I'm gonna soak it in the dish soap like this and maybe brush it with a toothbrush and rinse it off and then I'm gonna be able to put it right back in and and because I tested it and the tension works real good I'll be able to put it right back in it won't need any more adjusting or anything uh, it'll just be clean of debris okay so got that mentioned so I think I think that's kind of uh, covered the the intro I, I uh, well I, I have a an old cheap uh, paintbrush I used to brush on the solution to the sticky parts that need it. I use different sizes of wooden barbecue sticks. I like to use wood or maybe plastic so it doesn't scratch or put any burrs on any of these gears I work on. I usually have one or two wire brush uh, detail brushes so that if they're really nasty I can get in there and scrub them. I keep all my old toothbrushes and everybody knows give me your old toothbrushes and I use that to dry brush first to scrape a lot of that oil off. Uh, I have some bottle type brushes I bought a pack of like 10 different sizes for eight bucks on Amazon. Um, I have Singer oil. I prefer to use TriFlow Superior Lubricant with PTFE like Teflon and I also use their clear synthetic grease on the gears. 
and you, you, you can just use regular sewing machine oil and, and a good synthetic grease if, if you don't want to get these products they're they're a little bit more and you may where you live you may not even have access to them right <laughs> so okay so um, I guess that's about it I'm gonna set up here and start picking and brushing and I'm just gonna show you a little clips of these process not the the whole drawn out thing okay let me, let me show you a close-up of this uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit here um, that's called the worm gear it's uh, in this case it's attached on to the main arm shaft some are cut right into the arm shaft but in these later years this is mid 60 they made the arm shafts a little smaller and just put a gear around it but that's called the worm gear and uh, this stack a lot of people are going to call this a cam stack and because the pattern disc sits up here uh, Singer calls it the disc drive and down at the bottom of the disc drive you'll see a, a circular teeth around it, like a gear and they call that the worm wheel so the worm wheel gear mates with the worm gear so that when the machine is rotated the the uh, disc drive rotates the pattern uh, get up here a little bit so the disc drive uh, rotates the pattern the disc that sits on top of this so disc driving worm wheel to the worm gear and the disc drive and then that way the little follower can follow along the pattern disc which can move the needle bar driving arm which swings the needle back and forth and uh, what I what I do with uh, these is just start scraping out this has a, a grease I really don't like it's a uh, very black and very stinky and very sticky and sometimes they really really fill it on here so a lot of times I'll just put the point of that barbecue stick uh, in w between the gear there and just rotate the stick and it'll just follow along that worm gear and the idea is that you want to uh, get as much of that gunk out as you as you can and it gets way past the gear and it's just it's just a big mess it's hard it's harder to get down there to the uh, worm wheel so first you want to get as much of you as you can and you know a lot of times you clean it here and then the worm wheel tra uh, tra transfers it right back to the worm so you can say wait a minute I already cleaned that but it, it's you know it's kind of a slow tedious process process but I want to get it all out of there so after it's clean I can put some fresh synthetic oil on there okay so I think you got the you got the hang of that and I'll take this and wipe it off on a paper towel or napkin or something and just kind of keep doing that so I'll turn on music I'll turn on a movie I'll turn on the news or whatever the talk show and just kind of sit around and do that okay so I worked I worked on that for a few minutes and I dug out uh, as much grease as I could the heavy black grease I got some pretty good chunks of it out of there I, I like to do that because uh, the crud cutter will break that down but this is such a weird grease that just it spreads it around a lot too so I just want to get it out of there uh, as much as I can so that's the pick part okay uh, I, 
the the grease on the gears is uh, different. Uh, it's dark too and it's dirty, but there's not much of it. So nothing picked off of those gears very much. But now comes the brush part where I'm just you know, I just take old dry toothbrushes and hold them up against those gears while I rotate the shaft and uh, try and get uh, as much of that residue off. Now down, way down deep in those gears, there's some dry hard stuff. So you can, you can see that coming off there. And I'll turn it one way and turn it the other and scrub it and scrape it and stuff like that. So I'm going to work on that for a while and also do that to these two gears. Okay, so I continued to uh, dry brush it for a while. I used a few brushes here. You can see I got quite a bit of the residue off of there. And uh, by the way, these brushes can be soaked for a little bit in the crud cutter cleaner and degreaser and, and come nice and clean. Uh, what I've got now is a couple mixtures of that crud cutter. Uh, one is a 20% solution, just mixed with water, and one is about a 50, maybe a pinch over 50% solution with uh, water. And that's the next step here now is to, is to use that on these uh, gears to try and get that embedded and dried up uh, old dark grease out of there. Uh, there's a couple ways to approach this. I showed you before the the old paintbrush that I had. I think this was made for acrylics. Um, and I just I'm going to dip it in the 50% uh, solution, and I'll just I can just you can just kind of brush it on there, and brush it on the other gear, mm -hmm. and go down below and brush it on the other you don't you usually don't need a lot uh, but you can you can do it like that and you can also just take your the dry brush that you're going to use to continue scrubbing this and you can dip it in the solution shake off the excess and then just apply it directly. Now as you go about cleaning the machine with crud cutter you may notice that it gets harder you know I'm, I'm just turning the arm shaft here it, it may get harder to rotate as you start removing grease, <laughs> grease and oil from things right but uh, don't don't let that worry usually after I've taken a machine out of the shower and dried it a lot of times all these uh, shaft uh, vertical and, and horizontal arm shafts will just be frozen <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to I'm going to continue with this uh, brushing and keep working on these gears to try and get as much as I can off of there okay and I will say that uh, you want to keep some you want to keep some rags, obviously, because you're working with a liquid chemical. You can see this black plastic that I that I have put down. It's just a garbage bag to protect the surface. But um, you want to protect the paint of your machine, you know. So if if the arm starts dripping down. Or you spill some of this cleaner on the paint just go ahead and wipe it off don't let it sit there for you, you know a long time because it can dull the paint now if it does that you can polish it back out and use a cleaner wax and stuff but uh, just keep in mind if you spill any to go ahead and you know just clean clean it off okay Okay, so I worked on this for a while with the brushes and there was a couple stubborn spots around the screw 
that holds this worm gear on. So I, I used my metal brush on that for a while and it came off. So when, when you get to the point you're satisfied with, whatever that is for you, we can move on to these other parts now. Now, I know I told you, once you start putting these chemicals on, you have to go through the whole process. Pre-clean, go in the shower and wash it, you know, dry it, uh, get it back on the bench and oil it. But I'm not going to be able to do that as quickly as normal because I'm making the recordings, right? So I, I had a lot of the liquid cleaner down in here, so I just, I just used a uh, barbecue stick and, and stuffed an old t-shirt rag down there to, to soak it all up. Uh, so when, when I start moving the machine around, I, don't, I didn't want it to drip out on here and me not notice it and not wipe it up. Okay, so uh, at this point now I've gotten the worst of it. I'm going to start using the uh, just 20%. Uh, usually 15 or 20% is plenty strong for this. And I'm just going to put a little bit of it on any uh, debris or grease that I see built up. You know, um, when I go into the shower, I've, I've got that 15-20% solution in the spray bottle and, and uh, that'll be enough like to spray off most of the coating of stuff. But if there's anything built up, you want to uh, go ahead and just brush this stuff on it to start pre-treating it. That's why I call it the, the pre-cleaning, you know. It'll, it'll soak, soak uh, soak in and soften up the gunk that's in here. The crud. Maybe that's why they call it crud cutter, right? So, I've got that uh, set up there. And if, if you want, you can take a little damp sponge and kind of wipe it up and see, you know, see how you're doing there. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I do normally is I'm going to uh, stand the machine up and I'm going to do the nose area over here. Now you can you can do the nose area. Well, maybe I'll just leave it like this and turn it around. And I usually would stand it up on the on the back just so I don't have to bend over the bench so far. But I'll point it point the camera at it here and just go in and it's going to be the same kind of thing with with the lighter solution the 20 percent just going to go in and down around the bottom of the needle bar and the presser bar uh, is usually where the oil drips and tends to build up and and dry and settle and stuff so I'll just give it a little yeah I see some up here too just a little build up there so I got to reach around here. I'm going to put a little on the take up lever. Okay. And that big piece of triangular pie shaped metal in the back, that's the counterbalance. And I'm just going to put a little bit on there. So you see, I didn't, I'm not putting a whole lot on here. It just doesn't need a whole lot unless you really have heavy, heavy grease built up. Right? I see a little bit here that's not, it's being a little more stubborn right up around here where oil has settled. So I'll go ahead and uh, dip my brush and shake it off and just see if a nylon bristle brush will take that off. And it's coming off pretty good. Okay. So we're looking good there. Uh, you can see down here, I took some different lint brushes and uh, bottle brushes and I poked out and brushed out, brushed off as much of the lint I could, poked it through the machine. So I'm just going to do the same uh, little thing here. I'm going to get that 
your 15 or 20 percent solution put a little on the dog put some around the, the hook area get it down in here I don't see any big buildup of bad stuff here so this is just going to be a light a light treatment here there is pretty gunky stuff on the top of the hook there and that's the problem when you let lint build up in there and if you're in any kind of a humid climate that lint just soaks up moisture I mean it just like a sponge and then you got this damp lint sitting on your metal parts and collects more crud and can create rust and so forth like that so we want to uh, and I see a little bit of build up there I wonder if I can get my yeah I can get one of my scrub brushes there and I'll brush the dog a little bit and these other parts the the uh, better you <clears throat> excuse me the better you pre uh, pre treat or pre wash the machine the more gunk you're going to get out of there when you take it to the and give it a shower so it's worth spending a little time with it got a little water and cleaner on the body so I'll wipe that off mm -hmm. now I wouldn't use this uh, crud cutter on the paint or coating of a black Singer machine the ones with the varnish or whatever that finish is because I had reports from a few people that they they left some on there and it and it harmed the finish pretty good <clears throat> so I've always put a disclaimer don't use it on those old 66 99 15 your featherweights stuff like that you can use it on the parts if they're really bad and you and you protect your paint with a rag or a, put a trash can or wrap it with saran wrap or cellophane or something mm -hmm. all right I think we're I think we're gonna be okay here so, <clears throat> I'm going to turn the machine uh, on its back and uh, kind of do the same thing. When you get to this uh, underside here, uh, where you're usually going to see build up is where the oil goes. So around these pitmen here, you're going to see oil. Uh, deposits from from years or decades of being oiled and people tend to slop new oil on there and not brush off or wipe off the old or even the excess new when they put it on so that's usually what I'm looking at down here I'll take some of my cleaner and I'll just start with that get some on there those areas so I can start softening that up uh, and then again I'll try it I'll, I'll try a nylon brush see if if that gunk will come up after a while uh, if it doesn't I'll use the uh, wire one of the wire brushes you know and uh, how uh, how long you want to work on this and the effort you want to give it is going to be up to you you know your machine your time mm -hmm. but even if you just get the bulk of it off your machine's going to be cleaner and run better in the future all right let's do that and let's uh mm, let's see hasn't been on there very long but let me try this uh, nylon brush yeah it's a few decades of gunk on there the nylon brush isn't making much difference there it is loosening up the spilled grease and debris on the paint inside mm -hmm. see if I can 
rotate this a little bit here. There we go. Get that up. Let's see if a metal brush can help me here. Yeah, now you can, hopefully you can see the difference that that's making right away. So I put some of the cleaner on there, let it sit for a little bit, and then I'm using just a, a typical detail brush it's called. Mm -hmm. I bought mine, uh, used to sell two of these in a package for a dollar at the dollar store. But they're, they're not expensive no matter where you buy them. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit and I'll come back when I have it where I want it. Okay, so that wire brush worked very well for me. Uh, cleaning off the worst of the areas. Then I painted the painted. I, I brushed on the cleaner uh, on the rest of the metal just to loosen up any gunk there. So when we go in to give it a shower. Uh, it's already kind of been pre-treated and hopefully we'll get a lot of that stuff off of there. The little debris that's in all the little nooks and crannies and everything like that. And the smell and the dust and grease and, uh, and uh, you know, what's that? I think, it, oh, that's a little bit of leftover leftover uh, went there yeah okay so let's see if I can the last thing that I'm probably going to treat here now is the oh, motor area and I've spoken about how usually this would be something I would fuss with and do my best to get the wiring and the motor or cut the wiring and at least get the motor out of there and things like that and uh, I just decided this time I'm going to try and clean it with the motor in there right <laughs> so I am going to pre-treat it a little bit with this 20% uh, solution just up in this area uh, this, this fan always throws stuff up into the area and the uh, belt tends to break apart over the year and throw off a lot of uh, debris from whatever that belt is made out of, rubber or fibers or stuff like that. So, just get a little bit of this on here to get it ready for the shower and uh, let's see I'll paint these paint I'll brush brush this area too because a lot of stuff settles around here again from the fan now uh, you know I've, I've, I've done a few dozen of these machines and I have found that this uh, water-based uh, crud cutter cleaner and degreaser uh, except maybe at full strength uh, it does not harm uh, rubber or plastic or glass or any anything like that you know uh, the only thing I found is the some of the coatings on the tension units like I did a 404 one time and the tension unit for some reason was really dirty just filthy so I took it all apart and I threw it in a solution of about 25% uh, crud cutter to 75% water and I kind of forgot about it. I, I left it in there for well over an hour while I was doing the rest of the machine and stuff like that. And when I remembered and went in there, that, that kind of bronze or copper brown colored indicator dials and stuff on the tension unit was gone <laughs> and I have like an aluminum <laughs> colored <clears throat> tension unit so <laughs> so I've always just kind of uh, been very careful with those either like just 
spray the solution on, put the parts in a strainer and spray the solution on and rinse it right off. Or else I, I just soak it in a dish, you know, uh, uh, warm water with dish soap. Like I wash the covers and all this on these on this machine, you know, and uh, that has never harmed any of it. So, okay, I think that's enough of that uh, pre-treating. I'm just going to wipe off a little bit that got onto the paint here and was running down towards the needle bar end. Kind of wipe off this excess of paint. Again, now, uh, I'm doing this against the way I said because I have to, I have to film it and uh, rec uh, record it and stuff like this. So I am kind of wiping off a little bit of the excess cleaner right now because I can't get it into the shower as quick as I want. Right? Okay. So... Uh, the one last thing that I want to do is just wipe down the cords because I'm not going to I'm not going to disconnect this but I'm going to leave like the the electric cords and the, and the foot controller hanging out and not expose them to the to the shower is my plan <laughs> so I am just going to uh, wipe them down right now since I have I have all the cleaning stuff here I'm going to just wipe them down with a sponge with a little bit of the cleaner on there, okay? But I need to set up for that. All right, to, to wipe down the cords now, I'm just going to get some of this 20% uh, solution on and into this little piece of sponge I got. And then I'll just... Uh, quickly use that to wipe this down and that'll be the final thing before I can go in and uh, wash the machine okay that's all I'm, I, I don't need to rinse it off or anything because I'll be heading right into the machine but it just helps get any uh, muck off of there and cords have maybe been laying around on the floor and Stuff like that. Now, if you want, you can you can take this whole foot pedal apart. I've got a series on how to do that. Just look for the button style foot controller. But uh, I might wipe it off with a damp rag afterward. But that's all. Just that. Now, if you remember all my dirty brushes I've used and stuff like that. I mean, you, you have, I have a solution left over, so usually I'll take them someplace safe and just put them in there and soak them, let them soak for a while to, to loosen all of that muck up, okay? But the next thing we'll be doing is going into the shower and washing the machine and the motor, <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry for the shakes, just hand holding here. I'm setting up to wash now. Um, I've got uh, my solution ready to spray, my bucket to hold the machine, which is optional. I put down a pad in the bottom so if the machine slips off, it won't damage my tub. I've got, uh, uh, you know, an old towel on the floor to catch any overspray. I've got my uh, leaf blower that I used to do the primary driving and a sponge and a brush and I'm going to set up here and get started. I also have a hose in here for rinsing. I forgot to mention that. I've got the machine set up here. I'm going to start with the uh, arm, <clears throat> the arm, the nose, and the hook area. Do a little light brushing. I'll do the body last and I, I'm going to apply this and kind of rinse as I go 
so that I don't have stuff on the paint uh, too long here. Okay, I've spoken about that. Give it a final spray and then the first rinse. Shows the brown stuff coming out there. You can see on the mat. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look that dirty, did it? <laughs> okay, let's do a little rinsing. <clears throat> Now, if, it, if I can still rotate the arm, I'm going to do that while I'm rinsing. Nope, not happening. Okay, I'll turn the machine. We'll work on that bottom area now. And also I'm spraying up from the underside of the motor. This is the 20% solution that I'm using. If you move the machine when this cleaner's on there, it's, it makes the metal pretty slippery. Now, people have done this in a tub, on their patio, or sitting on an old table outside. They've done it on a cement sidewalk. You know, uh, big utility sink, if you got that. This is just what works for me where I live. Okay, one more spray. Uh, a good rinse. very nice okay I'll turn the machine again here we go from the back of the motor This brush is a one dollar called a wheel brush to clean the wheels on your car. It's a it's a soft brush so it doesn't scratch anything. Let's rinse off that motor. set it up so I can just do the body, a spray on the body and a light brush. Okay, this position sitting on top of that old paint bucket is the, the most precarious because it, it can slip off when you rinse. Try and keep this quick so that the cleaner, even though it's only 20%, I just don't want it to damage any paint or anything like that. So I keep this part last and I try and keep it pretty, pretty quick. The back side of that arm, back side of the base, 
underside of the arm, front, a little bit more on the back, low. Okay. Let's give this a good final rinsing. Okay, now I usually I'm going to let that uh, drip dry a little bit. Then I'm going to uh, lift the machine off and <clears throat> set the machine on the back of the mat away from the drain. I'm going to empty the dirty water in that bucket. I take it right down the drain. And uh, then I'm going to spray around the tub with the cleaner and degreaser. So any debris from the machine that's on the side of the tub, uh, I'll wash off and rinse away also. Okay. Let's see how dirty that water is. Uh, you know, the machine didn't look that bad, did it? But look what has come out of there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Okay, uh, where's my spray? So I'm going to go ahead and spray down the... I see I spilled some myself, but still some lint came out of that bucket. Uh, just spray this down good. Rinse off any greasy stuff. Rinse that off. Okay, that's going to be it for the rinsing. See if I can get my bucket back up here and I'll get the machine up there for drying. I'm going to start with the top and the motor uh, first. Now, of course, this, this is a leaf dryer, so it's real loud. So, uh, I'm going to turn the, turn the sound off on the video and just show you a little clips of uh, how, how to dry it. But basically, I'm going to dry the whole thing, and then I'm going to come back and extra dry dry the motor area. But you want to get it very dry. So, this, this can easily take 10 minutes. Okay? Okay, I have to tell you that's always fun <laughs> to see all of that black muck and crud come pouring out of these old machines like that and then uh, seeing how pretty they, they look when they're finished. Uh, even if you don't get every little speck, you know, you sure got most of it. And uh, everything is uh, clean, shiny, the hook area, the nose. I'll show you the arm up here. Uh, 
you can see back into there it's looking pretty good now uh, you see some spotting on the shafts and stuff but we'll we'll brush a little oil on there uh, normally now what I would do will be to apply grease to these set this set of gears right here on the arm shaft to the vertical shaft and then down here on the worm gear to the worm wheel below and then all of the oil points on the machine and I'll do that later if you want to stick around and see that don't forget in the de description below the video I have a link to Singer where you can download the free instruction manual for this model and it shows you quite clearly where where to put oil and grease on the machine but here's the moment we've been waiting for oh what's this oh you know what this is uh, remnants of the old motor belt <laughs> when it when it strips off the sides of the belt and the, th the uh, fibers in the motor belt come off they wrap around the they wrap around the pulley there so let's see if this thing even is going to work okay that's the main thing we want to see so I'm going to plug it in and uh, keep one hand on the plug in case I got to yank it out oh, so far so good and then I'm just going to try and run the motor and see if it even works anymore There we go. Whee! Nice breeze. It's not mounted properly, so you're hearing some vibration. But it looks like no harm, no foul was done to the motor. So I'm real happy. I'm real happy with that. Uh, to uh, I, you can't probably see it as well as I can, but uh, it sure came out much cleaner. You can see how bright all the copper is and the fan and all the metal parts and the wiring and so forth. I, I just want to mention again about this uh, fibers when the belt gets worn and those little fibers from it strip off and wrap around the pulley. Uh, you know that can interfere with the operation and speed of the motor because the belt can slip on that. They're, they're usually made of like a nylon fiber and they get slick and uh, so uh, once in a while if you're having a slow speed or something like that it can be dirty as you saw in here you can slip the belt off and check in there and, and try and clean up the area a little bit um, you know just just a thought let's just hear that motor one more time <laughs> okay so uh, if you stuck around here then uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you I put a little grease on here oh by the way uh, most of the time and I'm sure this will be the case this is frozen solid now right there's no there's like no oil or grease in any of the bushings the bearings the gears so <laughs> it's just uh, it's stuck so uh, you, you want to get some oil in there but first I like to put on the, the grease uh, on the gear here and uh, I'll turn around and show you on the worm gear and stuff because what I found out if, you, if you're oiling and stuff and you get one drop of oil on, on one of those gears Later, if you go to put grease on, the grease is just not going to stick, period. So I like to get a little bit of grease on there, even though I can't turn it. And then I'll start oiling. And then as the oil gets in there and starts freeing things up and it can turn, that little bit of grease will get spread around gear to gear. And I can add more later. Okay, so let me get set up here and I'll show you putting uh, grease on these. Okay, now you can even wipe a little bit of grease on these gears with your fingers. I like to be as accurate as possible. And any grease that doesn't get on the gear, I want to wipe up. Any oil that 
doesn't end up where it's supposed to be or overflow I want to wipe up because it just collects lint and dust and stuff like that but I'm going to take that uh, tri-flow clear synthetic grease that I use and this is a little acrylic brush I just bought a package of had about eight brushes in it for five or six bucks uh, years ago many years ago at Walmart I think it was for about four or five bucks but I'm just going to put a little dab on there and I'm just going to brush it right on the teeth of those gears and I, as I said I can't I can't rotate this so I can't do it completely but I, I want to get some on there and as soon as uh, I can get things moving that will spread onto the other gear I, I can see half of that lower gear down in there so I'm just going to brush a little of the grease on that okay let me turn the machine around later if I want I can easily add more grease a little bit and I'm going to just go down there and brush it into those open slots on that big old worm gear and it'll work onto the worm wheel as I get things moving in the future okay so that's it to get the grease growing going now while I'm up top I might as well uh, get start getting grease I mean oil I might uh, start getting oil on all these moving parts right and as I said the, the instruction manual has clear instructions where to do this so just use sewing machine oil or this Triflow Superior Lubricant. Uh, don't use household oil. Don't use WD-40. Don't use a 3-in-1 product like that. You just want uh, pure sewing machine oil or a oil like this that's basically sewing machine oil with a PTFE, which is a, like a, think of it like Teflon for the gears. Okay, this is the front horizontal arm shaft bushing right up in there. And I'm going to pump that full of grease because I want of oil. Sorry. I'm going to put some good, good old drops of oil in there. And because uh, I've washed out all the old stuff or most of it, right? And if I splash a little bit around or something like that I'm just going to wipe it up okay now coming back here on this end I've got uh, three places for this shaft going down the elliptical for this shaft going down and the uh, uh, back port for the main bushing on the rear of the arm shaft. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can if I can get that tube in there so I don't waste too much oil. There we go. I'll pump a few drops into there. Whoops. Okay. I'll put two or three drops to start on the elliptical. I'll go down into that big heavy bushing back here and squirt some oil I see it filling up okay now I'll set the machine down there's really not much the oil on the back side here or you don't lubricate the motor in any way so let me come around here to the front and I'll put some oil on the uh, places that show where to put it in the manual this is up at the anchor for the take up lever mm -hmm. and a lot of these you'll see a little hole a little port for things I can't get to this one that's back here till I can rotate the top oh, the top bushing of the needle bar the bottom bushing of the needle bar the little uh, swings for the vibrating bracket and the bushing for the presser bar get a drop or two of oil on there get that started and a drop 
on the extension that goes out to the little spring in there. Okay, let's see if this will even start swinging a little bit. Yeah, it does. It's a little stiff, you know, but it's moving. Okay, and there's a there's a place back here, the needle bar connection link, that we'll have to get when we can start rotating that machine. Now, <clears throat> see, I got this turned around again. Um, I don't know if you'd be able to see that. Let's see. Right up here below the edge of this indicator plate, there's a hole. It's an oil, oil port for the top bushing of the vertical shaft. That's just below the gear. And the shaft goes down to the uh, counterweight and elliptical below, but there's a big bushing, just like in the horizontal arm, the vertical arm. So, we want to uh, get in there. I like these little tubes because you can stick them in until they hit right to the bushing. And then you can put oil in there. If you don't have that tube on your oil, you can lay the machine on its back and drip oil in there as best you can. There, some of it's starting to squirt, squirt out now. So usually you just put a drop or two, but because, because we've washed the machine, right, it's going to be low on oil. Now the other end of that shaft is right down here. This little hole in the upright arm. Let me show you. See how far that goes in? All the way in there to get to that uh, bushing on the lower end of that shaft. So let me get a good squirt in there. I see it backing out, so I'll stop. Mm -hmm. Might as well, since we got the oil, there's a little hole up here on the arm of the bobbin winder. Okay, right up here. And that's what lubricates this shaft. So about once or twice a year is all you need on this, but go ahead and put a drop or two of oil on that. And give it a little spin. Okay. Then down here we've got the hook. Okay. Now oops. in the center of the bottom of the hook you'll see a hole and and that hole goes down in there and on the side of it is a little weep weep hole w-e-e-p hole to let oil go on to the hook shaft because there's a little bushing for it it just constantly turns right so you want to put a drop or two in that little hole and let it sink down and seep out and weep out onto the uh, shaft for the hook. Now on the edge of the hook on the inside there's a little tiny shelf and usually when the bobbin case is in place you put a, a drop of oil right about here at the edge of the bobbin case and uh, the, this positioning bracket and then you run the machine or turn the handle and it spreads the oil on that race. I don't have the bobbin case in yet so I'll just put some oil on my finger for now and I'll just gently wipe it on the race. Okay, So those are the two places down here to, to oil. Then I'm going to turn the machine on its back and we're going to go to the bottom here. See if I can prop this up a little bit and give it a nice, nice angle on it. Mm -hmm. And again, on a lot of these places that you oil, there's a little hole uh, that takes the oil. But where this shaft meets right here and swivels you want to put some oil 
in the hole on the top of this connector is metal and metal it's like a little bushing for that to swivel on hole up on this one right and then down here where this shaft swivels or hinges okay mm. I can't see I can't get to the hole up here but we can put a drop of oil right up there that'll get in there a little bit to start and we can do the same same thing over here if you can see the little place to hole to put oil then you put it otherwise you put it on these moving parts where the where like this the shaft moves against it shaft moves here it's like a little figure eight piece of metal here that's where the feed bar goes up the feed dog screwed to it Put a little, and when you wash a machine like this you might come back and do this again and even a third time just a little bit of oil you know once it starts moving you can run the machine and turn the hand wheel and you can get all that stuff uh, worked in get the oil roaming around and if you put a little too much oil and when you're running the machine at first it throws a little oil out on those shafts just wipe it, wipe it up that's all let's see if this will turn at all now oh it's just look it's just barely starting to turn see there now if I had the hand wheel on here I'd have more torque you know and I could turn it easier but at least I am getting some movement now so that oil is going to uh, soak in there and it'll start getting spread around and there may have been a little moisture trapped in those bushings so we want to get this oil in there so that it doesn't rust you know uh, onto the shaft the bushing is probably centered bronze to hold the oil but the shaft is steel and it, it can rust ay, ay, ay. still pretty stiff okay still pretty stiff mm -hmm. let's go up here and take a look at this when I turn the shaft you can see stuff starting to move a little bit mm -hmm. now right in there right in there see if you can follow this right at the back of the connecting link there's a hole where it connects to that counterbalance and that's where I want to get some oil in there because I, I couldn't get to that before because it was facing down and I couldn't get anything to move okay let's come back up here and look at our main bushings these are the ones that you really really are dependent on the machine moving See, all that oil that I put in there before has already gone down into the bushing you can't even tell I oiled it before okay. let's come over to these guys these three got the big one get some oil on those look at that that was overflowing before and now you couldn't even hardly tell I'll put some oil on there and I'll get some more oil in this one there we go mm -hmm. okay now I see that the gear has rotated a little bit so I'll just I'll just brush a little bit more of uh, 
grease on there and let me get some more grease I'll brush a little bit more on that worm gear and you just keep working with it like that you can oil it up good and let it sit for a little bit if you want and just brush this grease into the open worm gear there might end up doing that three or four times just a little bit of a time at a time and let's check our vertical shaft again <clears throat> before I leave you I just want to show you that things will start moving again I don't want you to wa wa wash your machine and then it's frozen and then my ears will be burning <laughs> that damn guy look he ruined my machine <laughs> Again, I've done this to dozens of machines, washing the machine. I'm kind of pleased with myself about that motor, man. That saved me a lot of time and hassle with that motor. Oh, I forgot. That's why I forgot one other. Uh, now, these, on some machines, this oil, this goes for a, hmm, this goes for a shaft the lower vertical shaft but not on this machine because this machine doesn't have a gear system there those two holes are just to mount attachments that you use for the machine like a seam guide and things like that mm -hmm. get a little bit more oil up here Once you're done oiling and the machine is all run in and and working good, you can come back just with a your little oil rag, whatever you're using, and you can uh, wipe up any of the excess oil. You remember when we started to clean that? You remember how stained and dirty and mucky that was? That's because people just throw the oil on there and then. That's it. Don't be one of those. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can get things moving again here now. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's still pretty stiff, but it's getting it's getting better. There we go. There we go. Now when we get a hand wheel on here and can get some torque, it'll be much easier to uh, rotate that. Then it'll really start moving well. Okay? Then when it gets moving well, I'll slip the hand wheel and motor belt back on and run it in. I'll fill it up with oil and I suggest you run it at a moderate speed for about five minutes. To, to let everything heat up and get that oil into those centered bronze bearings real well so you'll be smooth as silk see it's already it's already getting easier to turn okay so a little bit more work to do after that I've got to uh, I don't have to but I will be replacing these worn out bed cushions I'll take the screw out and pull these out all right pretty little machine so there's not a whole lot more to do on this machine I I'll uh, let it sit for a while and then I, I I'll get the belt and hand wheel back on there and run it I have all the clean covers I can put back on and and get the get the tension unit back in and get that fixed up and those of you who have watched some of my cleaning videos and clean machines, you, you know how rewarding and fun it is and addictive. <laughs> it started for me, I, I don't know, eight years ago or so. My wife bought, brought home a $10 uh, thrift shop fine and asked me to get it working. And since then, I've done dozens of machines and started my channel and stuff like that. 
if you if you've never uh, fixed up an old singer and stuff I have several different models and playlists uh, on on the home page of my channel I'll show you how to do it and you might think about it it's a lot of fun it can be addictive <laughs> so oh yeah it's getting a lot easier here so I uh, I'm gonna start some more treatments and uh, so I get through that I'll get this machine finished up and I might do a quick little uh, slideshow just of it uh, fixed up and stuff like that so you can see the complete thing I, I gotta change these old rotten hard cracked bed feet uh, take the screw out and replace them I bought a set already from the featherweight shop who they they sure have a good price on them lately with their when you consider their free shipping what was shipping costs are and uh, I get I got the new belt and I'll put the light back on and everything like that and we'll get it all all set up and running good then I'll try and figure out what to do with it I can't can't keep it haven't named it because I can't keep it so <laughs> I'll find I'll find some somebody some I'll find a home for it somewhere. Thanks thanks for uh, watching. Uh, I'll put links on the end here real quick to uh, cleaning videos and uh, maybe I'll put one about installing motor belt for you if you've never done that and and uh, in the description I will put links to the products and manuals and where I bought the stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of yourself.